Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. I've just taken a look at everybody dropping in, and uh, looks like we've got representation from all over the world. Thank you for joining our webinar today on sunsetting and DECA and uh, how we could use uh, our platform, LucidWorks, to uh, exceed customer expectations and and really uh, empower your teams as well with uh, with really powerful insights. So looking forward to, um, to diving into this with everybody. Just a couple of housekeeping rules uh, to, to, to get out of the way. The, there's a Q&A in a chat, so feel free to uh, converse with the other attendees, or if you have questions, you can put those in the Q&A. Um, if you need any technical assistance, you can put that in the Q&A, and we'll address that as well. And then the slides in the recording uh, will be available starting tomorrow. So uh, if you happen to drop early or uh, want to review this afterwards, we'll make it available for everybody. My name is Garrett Schwegler, and I'm a program manager at LucidWorks. I'm joined by my colleague and teammate, Sanjay Mehta, who's the head of industry for e-commerce. Yeah, uh, well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanjay Mehta, and is a uh... As Garrett mentioned, uh, head of industry of commerce um, here at LucidWorks. Um, my background in commerce goes more than about 20 years uh, in various roles from technical to consulting um, and then uh, business facing. Um, uh, one of the reasons I'm here is I did spend some time um, as an employee at Indeca. <laughs> so I do have a, a kind of an understanding of how uh, customers have implemented, how it was used. and. Uh, why a product like Fusion uh, makes sense and how that alignment works there. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, and I uh, also spent a fair amount of time uh, with Indeca, but more on the client side. Uh, so I was at a, a national retailer for a number of years uh, who had Indeca power, pow powering their search and browse. And so uh, I managed the search and taxonomy there and then uh, from there i went into consulting with cirrus 10 who has done a number of indeca replacements uh, from indeca to lucidworks and then also uh, with solutions to augment indeca for those who were not ready uh, to jump and so found ways to continue to derive value uh, out of out of the platform uh, and then cirrus 10 was acquired by lucidworks about a year and a half ago and so here we are. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with LucidWorks, uh, we are a global uh, product discovery and digital commerce uh, company, but we also have expertise and solutions uh, for these other verticals and customer service and knowledge management. So can really deliver the whole connected experience uh, from the employee to the, to the customer. We've got a couple of logos here uh, from our digital commerce line of business. A handful of these were moved from Indeca to Fusion, brands like Lenovo and Foot Locker. And I think we've got a couple dozen uh, that we've got under our belt so far. So a fair amount of experience uh, in this space. Uh, understanding um, how to do it efficiently, effectively, and to make sure that uh, our customers are deriving the most value out of our platform over and above uh, what they had for, for Indeca. So just a little bit of a deeper dive into digital commerce specifically with LucidWorks. So, we cover the spectrum or the funnel, however you want to look at it, from top to bottom, uh, from traffic generation and customer acquisition uh, through the product discovery section, uh, specializing in search browse personalization, and then all the way down to chatbots and self-service solutions. So we, we really have a broad uh, uh, number of solutions to to address uh, both product discovery and then above and below in the funnel, uh, which has been really important when we think about you know, replacing Indeca and, and making sure that there's uh, still really high quality uh, solutions to, to replace and fill in those gaps. 
And one of the main reasons that I think we're all here is, I mean, I think we have this uh, alignment that we're, there's a lot of people still on Indeca and that our customers' expectations are changing. So whether it's the, the Googles or the Amazons or some of those other big players who are creating these experiences uh, where the shoppers can you know, nearly type in anything into the search bar and get relevant results, as well as really personalized results, customers' expectations are changing. And so we've really worked hard on um, polishing and pointing our solution at uh, meeting those customers' expectations and have had really good success uh, in replacing Indeca platforms with Fusion to deliver those personalized and relevant experiences. So I hope that today, uh, you know, we might show Indeca in a grim light, but just uh, we'll also address the, the importance of uh, moving on because now is the time. And uh, speaking of now being the time, We'll kick off today with a quick poll. So you should see a poll pop up here uh, in a second. And what we want to understand, and we can tailor uh, some of this content on the fly for the audience, is when do you plan on replacing Indeca? So is it within the next six months, the next six to 12? Uh, maybe beyond 12 months, or it may not be immediately on your roadmap. So. If you can give us a little bit of insight to that, we can tailor some of this content specifically to the audience, and um, and uh, and then I think you know we'll all find value in this. Oh wow, look at that! All right, mm -hmm. so so it's either really urgent or or it's on the roadmap. So that's that's positive. So we've got uh, definitely a couple talk tracks that we can address this with, and uh, and I hope you you all are going to find that interesting. All right. So let's let's get into the the uh, internals um, and and talk about when when we we look at uh, replacing something like your search solution. I think now is an opportunity to think about your entire user journey and all those elements. And as we know, Indeca did do more than just uh, search, right? I think we want to talk about what elements of that experience you may want to replace. And you don't have to boil the ocean, I think is, um, I think an important piece, right? A lot of folks may want to uh, slowly rip out certain elements. Maybe they start with search. Maybe they start with browse. Uh, maybe they start with content or personalization uh, recommendations, those sorts of things, and test them in. So, you know, we want to, want to make sure everyone feels comfortable that you, you don't have to rip out <laughs> and tear out everything at once. It is possible to, you know, go in in a more a la carte or modular fashion. And a couple of big things you'll will we'll take away kind of a salient points is what you gain uh, in particular when we think about how your day to day is around merchandising and leveraging AI to uh, either help you and automate much of that or uh, assist you in your day to day. Uh, but also uh, when we move to the other end of it of how the platform's deployed you know, again, being more of a SaaS based type offering, I think, you know, where you don't have to worry about um, the scalability concerns you may have had before and all the hardware and all those sort of things, for example, on holidays, that's an important one. And then as we move in towards more what we call headless commerce um, scenarios where commerce is moving beyond, you know, the web store and mobile, but into the stores, into the call centers, I think really important to talk about that connected experience and now having an opportunity to be using a platform as that centerpiece of that. And again, um, you know, modern architecture, architecture has changed a lot over the last 10 years or so, say since Indeca had its heyday. And again, be, being able to take advantage of a lot of that is key. Okay. And uh, just a breakdown, um, you know, I know it's a little bit of an eye chart, but uh, one thing to take away is it's additive. Uh, what you'd be getting when you move from an Indeca to, for example, a LucidWorks solution is going to be additive. So you're not really going to lose anything, but you have a ton to gain, right? And here we highlight um, in particular what is, um, you know, that you're probably already using or, or, or maybe not, <laughs> uh, but, but it is available in Indeca. 
and what uh, Fusion offers. And you know, in in, in a lot a lot of respects, we think about e-commerce. Um, the demands on content, demands on information are greater now than they were before. Right, customers and shoppers expect more than just seeing product data. They want to see user generated content, you know, reviews, video. They want to be able to grab anything. And again, that that's important from an ingestion perspective. Again, the core uh, having everything you have is a deep rules engine, synonyms, spell corrections is there plus more. And then the AI, as you can see, one of the deeper areas of expansion. You'll get again. We'll get into this in more detail. But having AI drive much of the experience for you, right? Kind of the self-learning search, using uh, the behavioral signals of your users to improve the search performance without you having to go in there and set up rules. You know, a complaint we've always seen from many, many customers has been the amount of rules and, uh, you know, unwiring all those rules becomes a nightmare, as we can imagine. Personalization, again, is a big topic for everybody and having an AI-driven approach to personalization allow you to scale and even get to that one-to-one -one experience is key. And then um, the merchandising, if you're using Experience Manager, some of you may be on Page Builder for that matter, uh, with the legacy solution, uh, you know, everything you have, but less some, um, right? Um, and again, having more of an AI-assisted model. And then we'll get a little bit more, you know, and highlight the differentiations. Again, you know, visual merchandising, built-in testing, uh, bring your own model is a big one, right? Uh, where you, we might give you um, a model for personalization for search relevancy, but you can always bring in your own. That's something that's lacking in even a lot of competing platforms today. Hmm? Garrett. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Sanjay. So I know diving into some of those, uh, those those details we it can be a little dry so i'm gonna i'm gonna give everybody a little story of uh, a real life example that happened uh really just a couple of weeks ago and um, i think it'll help bring this together for us and then um and then sanjay i'll pass it back to you but uh, i am guilty of being one of the many who participated in the exodus from san francisco uh, about a year and a year and a half ago at this point and uh, moved on to santa cruz uh, to escape the concrete jungle and ultimately, you know, get a little bit more space and start to enjoy the outdoors a little bit more considering everything that was going on. So in our backyard now, you know, we have uh, access to the beach. We've got the redwoods for some hiking and mountain biking. Of course, there's a boardwalk down in Santa Cruz, which is a fair amount of fun. And um, so we were able to trade the roommate for a spare bedroom. I've Got a little space where I can work in now. Uh, we, we freshened up the place with a little bit of paint, got the art on the wall, put the knickknacks on the mantle, and um, and then realized, okay, we've <laughs> we've got a, a bed without sheets because we haven't previously had a spare bed or a spare bedroom, and we have uh, not only my parents coming to visit soon, but also the in-laws, and I so I asked. Uh, my wife, Sarah, I said, hey, uh, you know, do we have any sheets for this? She goes, no, do you mind, you know, going ahead and ordering some? You know, I said, sure, but with a little bit of panic in that, and this is a little bit embarrassing, but I haven't had to buy bed sheets before. It was, I, I guess I either brought them from my parents' house at one point, or when my parents would come and visit, they would bring some new bed sheets, whatever the case was. I, I feel like my recollection of this buying bed sheets in the past was as a kid getting into the minivan, going to the mall down the street, going into JCPenney, and then there's there's like a wall with all the bed sheets on them. And my mom would say, yeah, go you know find the highest thread count and for whatever size. And so those were the two parameters that I was familiar with uh, when when shopping for bed sheets. So, you know, rather than going down to the mall, I go online and I start searching for full bed sheets kit. So obviously I don't know what I'm doing here that we call these sets, bed sheet sets, uh, but the search engine was able to interpret it and bring back uh, what looked like some relevant products. And so I click on the first one and the, uh, or I'm sorry, the in the third position, I click on that one first and I get to the product detail page and realize immediately uh, that there's not a listing for full, right? So we have queen, 
King and California King. Um, so despite it being on sale and attracting me to, to get the click, uh, it doesn't have the right size. And so I go back to uh, the results page. And so I start taking a look at some of the filters and I'm noticing in uh, the item type filter, there's a whole ton of noise in there. And so the, the search engine's probably misinterpreting uh, really what I'm looking for and ex extending too, casting too big of a net, uh, bringing in a bunch of noise. Luckily, there is a bed size uh, filter. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but gender and size, right, there's a bunch of noise that's being brought back. So I can tell that um, the recall here is a little bit challenging. So I end up going ahead, clicking on uh, filtering on full, and then finding another on sale uh, bed sheet set. And so, I, you know, I'm reading through it and it looks, you know, mostly good, but I'm uh, realizing that the, the thread count's not really where I want it to be. So I get down a little bit further down the page and here in the recommendation zone, I, I click on the popular related products, hopefully to find, um, you know, something that's on sale, high thread count, and fits a full bed, right? I'm still on this mission. And, and so the, the last recommender on the far right there uh, seems to meet that criteria, right? 1,200 thread count, that sounds excessively high, on sale with a decent price. So I end up clicking on that one and I get to that product detail page. And again, um, there's not a full bed here. And so you're starting to see a theme, right? That uh, from my query to the results to the recommenders, and there's a struggle to understand really what I'm what I'm trying to get after. And so, you know, the friction ensues. And so I I end up going back to the search bar and I type in high thread count, full size bed sheets. Like let's put it all out there. Um, I know it's a lot of uh, tokens in this query, right? So it might be a little complicated, but I'm telling the search engine the search engine exactly what I'm looking for. And so at this point, I'm taking a look at the results and I don't really see anything that has a high thread count. We've got 500, we've got 220, and it's just, you know, it's just not working for me. So I end up texting my wife and say, hey, what do we have on the master? Uh, and she said, Brooklyn. And so I type that in and you can see that there's a spell correct uh, from Brooklyn in to Brookline. And so it's, uh, again, not really picking up or understanding what, what I'm trying to get after today. And we're almost done. I know this can be painful. So I go up to browse. I know I can trust browse. I'm in the business. And I know that <laughs> if, you, if you really just restrict the recall by category, I can get into my filters. Um, I can find what I'm looking for. But at this point, I've given lots of signals from my search terms to my filters about I'm interested in something in sale. Each of the things I've clicked on have been on sale. I've explicitly mentioned and filtered that I'm looking for a full uh, bed sheet size. And when I come to a browse page, I would expect if they're trying to really get me to the cart quickly, that we could re-rank these products based on those affinities that I've expressed. Uh, also high thread count, right? Which I've mentioned in uh, the search term and also um, in my clicks. And so here I'm presented with what appears to be a static page. Uh, there is one item on sale, but the rest are not. Um, I'm unsure if any of these at this point are full in size and the thread counts are not very high. So it's just a, you know, a brief example to show the struggle and the, the many number of friction points uh, that your customers can be experiencing with Indeca uh, without using a lot of the new AI capabilities that, that they expect. And so I'll just run through real quick uh, these pain points just to uh, pull them out specifically, and then I'll hand it back to Sanjay and he'll talk about uh, the Fusion platform and how it can relate to this. So entity recognition, when we're talking about the size, so full, right, was explicitly mentioned and filtered on a couple times. Uh, the bed sheets, that could be a product type. There are a lot of clues that the shoppers are offering 
to you and the search engine and the filters that are signals that should be able to be picked up on uh, to not only influence results, but also the recommendations. Remember, those uh, were not filtered by full either. The uh, machine learning long tail analysis. So when I, when I came back with a longer search term, uh, perhaps not a lot of people are searching for that. Uh, there's today in Indeca generally a strong soul is going through spreadsheets of low-performing queries and trying to make them better with rules. Uh, that is quite a struggle and a mountain that nobody is ever going to climb. So um, I, you know, I guess really didn't expect the search engine to pick up on it, but there are capabilities today, especially with our platform, that can address this and at scale. So the no keyword match, and uh, our solution there is a, a vector search solution. But remember, Brooklinen, um, and that was spelled cor spell correct into Brookline. That could be a quite a common uh, search. It's not a product that is carried by JCPenney, but is quite a popular bedsheet manufacturer. Um, so there can be a lot of people searching for that, and we should be able to pick up on those signals and understand what they really end up buying and start to influence the results to bring back bed sheets uh, rather than a spell correct to a coffee table. The affinity recognition. So remember the, the on sale, the again, filtering on the size and things like that should be um, taken in as signals and then re uh, structure or re rank the results to match the affinities. Um, even to the extent of uh, not only just re-rank, but potentially excluding products as well that are irrelevant. Uh, and then you can start to identify shoppers. You can create segments, and based on the signals, you can start to put them in buckets. And that could have been really important when I ended up going back to browse to say, hey, this guy's a bargain shopper. Let's start to boost up the sale items. Sanjay mentioned earlier the bring your own model. So if you're observing that there are certain patterns in the consumers while they're doing their shopping, uh, there's you can build your own model, bring it in, and make sure you're tailoring your experience specifically to the kinds of shoppers that you have. Uh, the second last one here, index and search content. I didn't mention it earlier, but when I was on the browse page outside of the screenshot, there was a uh, like how to buy bed sheets uh, um, blog or article. And that would have been perfect for somebody like me on that first search, had it been indexed, uh, you know, we could crawl the content and the title and then bring that back as a result with the products to help guide somebody who might need assistance in making the purchasing decision. And then the last one here, the recommendations, of course, uh, swing and a miss in this example by not having them uh, potentially like post-process to to take out things or products that are uh, not fitting the filters and the queries that are relevant to that shopper. And so just really important, those, uh, we just had an article that came out and, and maybe we'll get it tagged into the end here, but the amount of people who are buying out of recommendations is through the roof. And so it's really critical. It's high intent to get that nailed down. All right, over to you, Sanjay. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about our, our platform um, to answer the call that you just saw with sort of what we, we identify as gaps or, or challenges in, in DECA. And uh, that is Fusion. And here we're talking about more of a, a, a commerce uh, configuration of Fusion and um, these core elements or modules that um, we, we, we feel are applicable to most Endeka users include the ML and AI aspect of it. Um, browse, I think many of you use um, Endeka for your browse or category pages. Um, some things you may or may not be using, um, most likely not, is these conversational search applications such as chatbots and support, um, where you may be using Indeca to index some of your support content for self-service. Um, it may be uh, not being used for chat, but again, that's a big one um, to kind of bring it all under one one roof. 
um, and unify that experience and bring in support content even in your e-commerce shopping journeys, which is, uh, I think, especially relevant for technical products that some of you may carry. Um, SEO and SEM, so all the sort of URL controls, generating pages that you may be doing in, in DECA and all the other uh, SEO optimization you have built in, meta tagging and all that, again, um, being a core to this solution. Uh, you, you know, what is a solution when you're not able to measure um, and gain insights from it, and uh, especially when it's uh, AI-based in insights, right, to help you identify opportunities. And so here, again, while we ship with some, you can use your own. We have a very kind of seamless integration to many of the uh, analytic packages out there uh, so that you can continue to use those or use what's brought to you. And more importantly, having these incorporated into your merchandising, right? So a merchant will have a view of the analytics that are uh, supporting a certain position of a product, for example. And then um, we, you know, Garrett just left off on importance of personalization and recommendations, again, uh, being another module and having that all connected. And again, you know, connected to that consumer, that intent, uh, where you, you don't see that disjointed experience, that affinity is carried over. And then finally, there's a rise of voice and other advanced search applications. So now natural language processing is a big one and it's, it's key here. So with that, I think, you know, I wanted to get into a quick demo. And so what I'll do is show the product in action quickly on a customer-facing sort of uh, view or viewpoint and then uh, drop in quickly to the back end um, merchandising viewpoint and, and search admin viewpoint just so you guys can kind of get a perspective of what uh, it looks like kind of compared to Indeca. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I'm just going to use a, a, a demo site um, just to highlight uh, everything um, that we're, we're going to go through really quickly today. And um, just to do a quick overview, uh, this site is completely powered by Fusion, including the content elements, the personalization, the recommendations, the search, the browse, the merchandising, and, and other tools um, that we have in here, for example, product finders. Uh, as, as you can see, the first step of some of the AI ML is using that to drive um, collaborative models, for example, suggesting searches, suggesting products based on my location and my region. Uh, so we're out, without having any effort on the shopper's part, having the machine suggest categories, search terms, or products immediately to help shortcut that shopping process um, or, or shortcut the path to purchase. In this case, I want to talk a little bit about personalization intent first, because this was a gap in, in DECA. Here, I might start my query uh, first with shorts, right? And so the machine is getting, making a guess of, uh, you know, the types of shorts, the suggestions. Let me go ahead and, and hit, uh, hit enter here. And we'll get into a little bit of our diagnostics to show you what's going on. So here we've got products and we're showing content results. And I think this is important. Content can be user generated, graphics that are from Instagram, for example, videos, YouTube, as well as products, as we all know, that's key uh, to today's shopping experiences. Here, I wanna talk a little bit about the, um, the machine learning ex uh, based uh, suggestions. And this is where we get an area of conversational search, conversational commerce, right? Where the machine can intelligently ask uh, for questions or ask for dimensions that you, you as a shopper may be interested in to help you narrow down your purchase, right? That's the kind of findability, but also discoverability. Watch as I, um, you know, I start mo uh, modifying my query a little bit where I do, you know, men's uh, and I'll just do blue shorts, right? And so here again, you can see it's picked up more of that natural language. It got the gender, it picked up the color, it also picked up the type or category, right? And now we'll see a couple of things, and I have this um, diagnostic so we can see what the machine's using. The machine picked up um, the, the fact that uh, it's gonna personalize or picked up a color um, uh, entity, it picked up a gender entity, a product entity, but then it's also picking up some preferences for personalization. So color and gender, these are common for apparel retail, but your model may learn it if you're selling you know, cameras, for example, it might be Arpature, 
you know, battery, uh, you know, the battery uh, life, that sort of thing. Um, you know, again, it, it could be a lot of things. So this is, uh, again, we're seeing the results and then the results showing this corresponding swatches, again, um, based on that intent, right? And I think um, the other piece I think we would talk about is, is, is uh, as I continue my my experience and you know, I go into shirts, we can, we can look at now the shirts that are being shown um, are also inheriting some of those characteristics like men's gender and color into those results. And notice again, um, uh, you know, notice again my suggestions again also being aligned to that. Let's say I wanted to go and I'm looking for hiking shorts, so just to see shirts or shorts, but let's just stay on hiking shorts and um, again, I've changed and I've changed, you know, my usage. And again, it's inheriting all these sorts of uh, aspects. But now I'll go and, and look at the personalization from a different lens, which is the uh, the content aspect. So here, you know, um, is the idea that we've picked up the, the the user's intent, which is he wants hiking, hiking shorts. Now all the content here has changed. You can see I'm showing hiking banners and articles. Um, as well as still borrowing from um, hiking-related topics for promotional products, um, you know, personalized products, but also still keeping in fact that we're still showing what everyone else is looking at still. So just an example of different, um, you know, collaborative models, as well as here we've got personalized models where we're, we're still taking what you've done as a user, either in your past session or current session, and incorporating that. And that also comes into the recommendations that are related. So you can always see, again, the user may look at corresponding recommendations for that product, that product result as well. Going back to this, I think, you know, one thing I like doing is just contrasting an experience. So here I've got, um, you know, the hiking experience, which is based on my searches and interactions, to one which is more um, like a base experience, which is kind of generalized camping, fishing, hiking, paddling, right? Um, again, I can understand that user's uh, context based on their interactions and, and personalize accordingly. Okay. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, talk about, which goes beyond, you know, um, I think we were in a DECA model is the chatbot aspect. So with chatbot, um, you know, let's say like, hello, I'll just kind of reset my, my, uh, my, my chatbot here. And it, we, it'll the same sort of um, capability now as most folks are on mobile devices. They may want to use this and use things with voice. You know, I might start with, you know, um, tell me about shipping, right, or Wismo, right? And so here the chatbot is intelligently processing that query and getting me a result, right? And so uh, here uh, we've got an answer, right? So this is getting that self-service but plus commerce. Here I could say, well, tell me about 1420, which is a, a skew, right? And so you or a style ID. So you can see the machine knows how to interpret that language, that natural language and conversational language into search. So I think, you know, that, that's another, I think, powerful, important aspect of what's occurring here. One thing I wanted to do is, you know, quickly hit on, um, you know, personalization. And, and I've got the, just something loaded here to, for the purpose of time is we do take, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of um, user history. So here we have anonymous user profile, so it supports compliance. And we can just see the different types of, of preferences that they may be personalizing on, for example, in this electronics example. Here I can look at, uh, you know, customers' click history, what they've looked at. So all this stuff is tracked. And then you can see some of the suggestions that were made and then what we were building personalization on, right? So what attributes? So the machine learns based on their click, they're filtering their fastest their searches, what to personalize on. So this is key in, in automatically driving that, that rank and relevance for that user as we go throughout. Okay. So I'm gonna pause there and go in back into our slides, but just to give you kind of a really uh, five minute quick, <laughs> quick, uh, quick uh, overview of the uh, chopper experience. And you know what we looked at quickly, it was the search brown recommendations, search browse and recommendations. What I'll get into quickly is um, uh, merchandising now, this is a back end view to talk a little bit about that. 
and and uh, how you curate that because we do know uh, what I hear from retailers over and over again is you know we 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 like to have sort of the ninety ten rule or managed by exception versus the rule so. You still always had it. We understand that you have experts in different categories, departments, and um, you know using that expertise to driving further curate uh, uh, experiences is key. So let's talk a little bit about merchandising. And so, one is you know creating attractive uh, experiences, right? Where you might want to um, create layouts that are really thematic or really related to a context. Um, but you also may want to feature the right products. So the same things you were doing potentially in experience manager, like boosting and bearing are all there, but you also want to use it to encourage discovery of products, maybe that are new, maybe products that would not naturally get visibility, right? Uh, long tail products potentially. And then uh, use dynamic models that can continually refresh based on user data. So that's, Again, an example where you may do it at a category, you may do it at a browse, you may do it at a search level. Here is just different examples where we're, we're highlighting new items, right? And we're badging them and we're pinning or boosting. We may have sponsored items. Here, again, we might even be pinning or boosting certain SKUs or sale items, right? And then here uh, we have an example of curating a whole page, for example, we might even pin, um, we'll talk about pinning content as well, but, uh, you know, controlling a layout uh, and collecting, creating a collection, right? Or a whole theme, uh, for example, a weekend getaway page here where we're, we're hand picking all the items for that experience. And this all falls in the realm of what we consider experience management, which is DXP is by what you've been hearing a lot of the, the analysts talk about digital experience management. Essentially, it's basically the, 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 the confluence or unification of personalization and content, machine learning, data science, merchandising, and search, you know, really all under one. And that's what we, we, we we're focusing on here. And uh, one thing I just wanted to touch on now quickly is going into um, the tool uh, as a, a business user. And uh, what I'll go ahead and log in really quick and share what the merchandising looks like for those of you who are, um, who are uh, using Experience Manager or uh, a tool of that, like that sort for your merchandising. So here I've got, um, you know, merchandising and, and again, in context, you know, visual editing, um, you know, everything you want to do, for example, by query, as we looked at shorts, will be done in context. I can do some sponsored content. I don't have any right now today, but again, these are what we similar to aligning the Indeca cartridges we call zones, doing things by query, by facet. And then here we have workflow. So uh, you can go in and manage um, boost, bury, pin. There's visual merchandising, drag and drop. Um, you know, I can actually look at information like signals that drive the particular placement of this product, like clicks, conversion rates, those sorts of things. And, uh, and then again, um, all the regular actions you'd expect in Boostberry block at a context level. More importantly, you can actually see uh, everything and everyone else change, so multi-user, and then also you know, what rules uh, also were firing or what rules were used to power uh, the result as you see it. So that's, I think, a pretty important um, piece, which is the visual merchandising. Um, what also is interesting is this rewrite. This is where a lot of the machine learning um, is, is showcased, right? And so here we have the machine learning already looking to improve underperforming queries, right? So it's taking a query, looking at a tail query, improving it, and telling you why without you lifting a finger. All you can do is specify if you want it to be published or not, right? And you can see all these queries that we're in, and the machine just picks up and says, here's how I'm going to prove the query for you. That's the head and tails. Misspelling, this is a big problem, right, for a lot of folks, especially in apparel and retail with colors and um, styles that are very custom. Here, the machine looks at click-through patterns of the user for that given keyword to improve, right, if it can't detect it automatically through color synonyms or other knowledge graph applications. 
phrasing is another one, right? As people are using more uh, voice search and um, getting, uh, you know, conversational in their use of e-commerce. Here we've got different queries that are multi-phrase and having the machine learn um, how to uh, improve or what products to show for that phrase, which is very powerful. And then synonyms. So this is where we have synonym learning. You don't have to go in anymore than, like you do in Indeca and manually create synonyms. The machine can learn them for you based on your users, if not automatically generate them through our own dictionary and knowledge graphs that exist. Uh, but you can just see how it's picking up and learning synonyms as well as stop words and remove words. So I know I try to throw a lot at you, but just kind of hitting on all the big uh, uh, main points of, uh, of kind of DECA from a user experience and uh, experience management merchandising. And then that's kind of what we went through. Um, but here's more of a summary, you know, in context. Pages and templates can be managed, entire curated experience, uh, drag and drop. We talked about built-in insights to help you guide you in your merchandising rules. Um, there's advanced workflow conflict uh, resolution or multi-user management. And we even get into really the depth of the amount of rules you can do. A lot of you might have you know, personalization, segmentation in a CDP and being able to learn, but also create rules against those, like, for example, campaigns or segments is also a big one. And, you know, really when we think about it, um, we, we look at customer experience and, and employee experience being key here. So everything we've been showing has been part of that customer shopper experience, those insights coming back into the merchant's experience, for example, right, in the form of analytics, but also maybe the questions or problems the customer is having all the kind of positive, negative signals and data that you may be getting from the customers being brought in automatically into your operational tools like merchandising, and as well as finally flowing back through the various groups and organizations you may have um, managing that experience. And uh, now kind of getting level set, you know, get back to Garrett here on some more of the functional aspects. Sounds good, thanks, thanks Sanjay. That was, that was awesome. So uh, just a quick recap, we've gone through our search browse recommenders. Uh, Sanjay has just gone through our, our merchandising and experience management. And I'm gonna drop in quickly to our solutions as a service. So for the uh, people in the camp from the poll who suggested that the uh, Indeca replacement is, I think you guys are saying like 12 months or beyond or not on the roadmap quite yet. Uh, this section is we're going to want to pay attention. Uh, as I mentioned, from Cirrus 10, uh, we were a consultancy who were able to derive additional value out of Indeca, and we've continued to do that over here at LucidWorks. And so uh, this is a pretty exciting uh, component that, that uh, I think you'd all be interested in. So uh, today's experience, so whether it's LucidWorks or Indeca or any other platform, really, uh, a lot of the approaches are following this lexical approach to search, right? Where it's a uh, it's basic language keyword match between what the shopper is typing into the search box and the data that you've indexed. And if there's no match between those, uh, then you're often served a zero results page. Now, luckily with Fusion, we have these other models that can start to understand intent and entity recognition and things like that that Sanjay was talking about. But there's still a little bit of an opportunity that, that remains. And we're going to talk about how we address that because shoppers at the end of the day have goals and that's why they're coming to your websites uh, is to buy something. And it's all too common that we are delivering these zero result pages, right? So this, this query is for Maguire 49, zero results. That's a, uh, it's a marine wax. Uh, this query for Igloo Max, which is uh, Igloo as a manufacturer, and Max is a line of products, uh, zero results. And lastly here, another one for Stratic, which is a fishing reel. And there are, Lots of products in this catalog that meet the shopper's goals, uh, many of which are overlooked by Indeca, um, which, is, which is unfortunate for your shoppers and for your business. So what I want to talk about real quick is Nevernall, 
which at the end of the day is a zero result killer. And this is going to slash your zero results and add lots of money to your bottom line. So we'll get into how it does this. I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, beyond the keyword match, that we have this AI uh, vector search. And so um, I know this is probably like, you know, mind blowing. What, what are we looking at here? So this is a vector space. And what we're looking at are uh, essentially a plot creating a relationship between the different products in your catalog. So those would be um, each product is a dot and they're colored by category. So you can see uh, that, you know, there's a concentration of red dots, which means that a lot of those products are similar in that space. But you also notice uh, throughout the plot that there's other red dots. And so there's varying degrees of relationships of similarity uh, between products and across products. And so you can kind of chart your catalog across this plot. And if that's still confusing, let's think about it like this. So uh, when you go into a grocery store and, and for instance, uh, taking a look here at the refrigerated beverages, you can start to see that the products are grouped together uh, where you have like your to-go drinks on the left and then your at-home drinks on the right. And then even maybe by brand or there's some flavor, uh, in, uh, some flavor groups in there as well, uh, the different kinds of pulp. And so they're all organized in group in a certain way on the shelf. And if you step back a little bit and think about the overall um, grocery store, these drinks are going to be uh, likely closer to other drinks that are um, maybe similar. So there might be like the milks nearby. And then the proximity of these products to like paper plates and things like that is at a greater distance than the other similar products. So we, we essentially plot the catalog into this vector space to understand the relationship between and across products so that we can find where the opportunity is to serve up products that are overlooked with a lexical approach um, and go into this vector space and find products that meet the goals of your shoppers. So there's four main use cases that we like to apply and have found a tremendous value in. Uh, one of them is misspelling, which is pretty easy for us, but products not carried. So think about Brooklinen when I was searching for that for the bed sheets. Product not carried, but we could find other similar products in the catalog that meet the goal of the shopper and serve those up rather than the coffee tables. Uh, vocabulary, so this is huge. This, Carpal tunnel is, is a real thing within Beko when you are plugging away at the rules engine, trying to create synonyms for everything. Uh, gone are the days of reviewing those spreadsheets and inputting those rules, because now we can use a model to scale and address all of those searches. And then in stock and out of stock. So as you have products coming in and out of your assortment, uh, rather than showing a zero result, we should be showing another product that meets that shopper's goals. So again, there's no rule curation um, to, to provide this experience. And we'll run through just a couple examples real quick to, to show what could be the impact. So we have a num number of implementations here, but we cannot show them in the webinar. So we're gonna superimpose uh, what those results look like. Before I get there, I just wanna show this as a quick um, showing of how we train these models. So one is, so if you get a zero result, what are you doing after that? So are you going back to search and finding that product, right? There's these persistent shoppers who will continue to search or go to browse and find a product and add it to cart. And so we can start to derive relationships among those uh, signals and put that into the model. And then the other camp that we're gonna train the model on are these converted results. So what are the successful searches and browse patterns that we're seeing that people are adding products to cart. And between these two, what we're calling encoders, we can train a really sophisticated model to meet those zero result needs. So remember uh, McGuire 49, that's a wax, uh, that uh, marine wax that we were looking for, and they have exactly that product in this catalog, um, and it gets overlooked, right? So this is to demonstrate the capability that we can look beyond this lexical relationship and find the products that shoppers are really looking for. 
Igloo Max was the other one. And there are uh, the Max line of products by Igloo, again, in this catalog that were overlooked. And so um, rather than giving zero results and ultimately uh, many of these shoppers are gonna exit the site, you can retain them, show them what they're looking for and get them to add it to cart. Lastly, and so this one is um, pretty unique and I think uh, can, can be debatable, but is at the end of the day gonna serve a customer goal the search for Stratic. And, and this one's even more challenging because in type ahead, we have that word and multiple searches for it, right? So uh, type ahead can be a culprit of zero results uh, on Indeca. But there are other um, light spinning reels that fit the customer goals, right? So you may want to deliver some messaging here to say, we don't have exactly what you're looking for, but at the end of the day, this is a lot more powerful than showing a zero results page and risking a site exit. So just to quantify the impact that we can have, this was at a top five warehouse retailer that spans everything from appliances to grocery to sporting goods. Uh, we were able to implement the solution, never null, the zero results killer ahead of holiday and increase average order value by 28% while decreasing the null result or zero result queries by 91%. So a huge testament to the capability of this model. And if anybody is interested, please reach out to Sanjay or I or anybody else on the LucidWorks team. We have a very straightforward ROI calculator that takes a look at a, a relatively conservative approach of the zero results that are driving exits and um, the, the spectrum that we think we can recover with our models to give you a really impactful ROI to take to your leadership uh, to get the ball rolling. And with that, I will uh, hand it back to Sanjay and he'll get us going on the connected experiences. Yeah. So we all know that uh, e-commerce doesn't operate in a silo, right? It's uh, for some of you who have stores. We all know uh, there's a you know a, a great uh, uh, you know great synergy between online and and in store. But also we we talked a little bit about customer service and self service and using your um, website as a mechanism to deflect calls, for example. And then there is the internal knowledge management, which also is, uh, uh, you know, augmented based on your customer interaction. So here is where we talk about, you know, all those different aspects and beyond being part of what is what we call a customer experience cloud, which brings all those elements together. Where there's a lot of search platforms out there really just focused on products only. We all know that uh, you know answers and knowledge, a knowledge base, and and those sorts of things are also very important to the experience. But also all the information you may have for those of you who may be in B two B or healthcare or other, where there's a ton of content sitting in all kinds of different repositories and making making that available right in a secure fashion to your user experience, whether you're selling or not, is key. And so that's what we talk about where. It's you know you know more of a universal search and experience platform, not just uh, you know um, focused on product discovery and and shopping and, and and that sort of thing. And so here you know with with connected experiences, we just want to highlight that you know there's a, a lot of value. Even the analysts are talking about are bringing in uh, support to commerce, commerce to support, uh, you know uh, enterprise knowledge management to all those channels, right? And having it all in one. And here, just to talk about how it's done is the architecture um, and how it all works under the hood for the technical folks in the room here. And basically we have a core platform that's built on scalability, extensibility. You can you know, configure it to your own um, needs. We all know we have different um, systems in our organization, different data models. So again, this is built for that. Uh, cloud, and you can choose your cloud uh, library of connectors to eliminate much of the integration need, and then very secure. We have a lot of financial institutions, healthcare institutions, um, I was going to imagine, in government as well. Um, so this is tantamount um, to the underlying platform. And then um, having data come from your enterprise systems, whether they're store, retail systems, ERPs, CRMs, right, marketing systems, CMS, again, 
having a very powerful capability to get in that data. However, uh, through connectors or through pushes, through incremental, you know, that's the key piece of getting and supporting all those different types of data and getting it sense, you know, centralized into one engine, right? So all the intelligence gets wrapped in there, product intelligence, customer intelligence, content intelligence, and pushing that out, you know, into your experiences. And again, we mentioned headless, uh, you know, traffic's higher on mobile now probably than desktop for most of you. Uh, you know, it could be email, it could be call center, it could be kiosks, uh, you name it, right? There's, again, um, we don't want you to be trapped by a, a certain touch point. And then um, just to, for for a little bit of the openness, to kind of talk about the openness, you know, Fusion is based on open. There's no black box here, right? So the fact that you can bring in um, your own models, you could bring in a lot of your own systems, your own machine learning. Um, you want to use a different type of natural language processing capability than um, what's sort of the turnkey out of the box. You can plug in, play different things. Um, you can use our recommenders or can use an existing data can be shared between um, different systems you may already have. So that's kind of key to what I consider to be valuable here is that kind of plug and play uh, ability to plug, you know, bring in again. Everything is shipped, but if you want to incorporate other elements, you can. And then, uh, as far as deployment for those you you want to you know deploy it, that's one of the flexibility the advantages out there, right? Is you know while many of the customers are in Google Cloud, we still have some in Azure. We still have uh, you know some in AWS for that matter. Um, so again, the flexibility that's offered through this abstraction through Kubernetes and uh, and such is, I think, key for a lot of you. And uh, really, to, 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 to you know, wrap up, I'm going to pass it off back to Garrett to close us out here. Yeah, thanks, Sanjay. Thanks, That's, that was good. So the um, just to really recap here, we just got the last couple of minutes. Uh, these were each of the topics that we went over today that uh, are generally high, high pain points in, in the Endeca world and are the capabilities and solutions and also architecture, obviously, that we can bring to take your business to the next level. And um, I'm not sure how public some of the questions are that were coming in, but there were some questions about, uh, you know, is this explicitly for commerce? And, and you know, the answer is no. There's uh, many of these solutions uh, are applied in different environments, whether it's the internet uh, or other workplace environments where uh, vector search can have an impact for employees and reducing friction there as well. So. Um, that's, that's important to call out that uh, as this is generally a targeted commerce um, webinar, it's 100% uh, uh, applicable to other parts of the business. Uh, so yeah, those were the, the line items there. And then uh, just a quick reminder from, a, again, a commerce perspective going up and down the funnel, uh, Fusion has different solutions, uh, you know, spanning from the customer acquisition and traffic generation all the way through product discovery and, and back down to chatbots and service. So um, covering the spectrum while applying AI and ML uh, to reduce those operational burdens and, and really deliver that, that premier customer experience. So with that, on behalf of Sanjay and myself, I know there's many people in different time zones here. Thank you for joining. I hope that you found this really, really valuable. If you have any questions, uh, these slides, the recording will be available after. Our emails are listed there. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us or anybody else at Lucidworks. And just uh, a little pitch here at the end, uh, please request a site assessment. There's a link there. You can find it on our website at lucidworks.com. Uh, we're more than happy to come in and take a look at your site, identify you know the common themes and opportunities, many of which we discussed today, and can talk about how we can uh, improve that for both your employees and for your customers on your website. So thanks again. We, we really appreciate your attendance and, uh, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you.